Knowing how to maximize improvement, whether you have a 1, 4, or 8 hours to put into the game every day, be extremely difficult. Because nobody has made a video like this, I will in detail go over how to structure your daily practice for maximum improvement, whether you have 1, 2, all the way up to 8 hours to play per day. Feel free to use the video chapters to skip to the part that's relevant for your situation. If not, you're more than welcome to watch the entire video. Before we get into it, if you've been enjoying the last few uploads, consider using code MARYTM. Once we get to 1000 users on the code, I'll do daily videos for one week straight. We're already on 704 users, so thank you to all of you who has used my code. It honestly means the world. Starting off, we have one hour. Only having access to 60 minutes of practice every day means that our time in front of the screen needs to be hyper-focused. Now, every single one of you watching this video will have different strengths and weaknesses in Fortnite. So trying to figure those out will be the key to success, especially when you're only able to play for a very limited time every day. Playing customs or ranked will full-on be a waste of time, as in customs you'll only be able to get to two end games, and that is if you don't get eliminated in the early game. In ranked, you might be able to eliminate 20 people within 30 minutes if you have a crazy game and great queues. That means that you'll get 20 repetitions of fighting in 30 minutes. Whereas if you play creative, you can easily triple those reps. If I had one hour to play every day, I would extremely heavily focus my time in on playing Zone Wars. I'd play both a 32 player Zone Wars and 2v2, 3v3 and 4v4 Sonys. I'd also do my absolute best to find as good players as possible to play against. One of the best ways to find good players to play against is to go on Twitch and ask smaller streamers if they want to play. By playing Sonors, you cover all the fundamentals needed to become a good player. Build an edit mechanics, aim, game sense, and awareness. A lot of people who are only able to play for an hour a day might have some spare time where they're able to watch some Fortnite. If this is the case for your routine, I would highly recommend watching a lot of good fighters in your spare time when you can't be on the PC or on your console. If you watch good players consistently, you'll pick up on so many things you naturally will implement into your own game, and you will be a better player because of it. Now, if you get the opportunity to play against one good player, in any form of 1v1s, you should also take that chance and play them even if you get absolutely destroyed. Getting destroyed in creative will be the most effective way to improve for those of you who only have one hour a day to grind. Naturally, if you see that you get eliminated a lot because of one distinct weakness, it is undeniably worth it to focus on that weakness for a few days straight. For instance, if you mess up one edit a lot, take a few days and just focus on that singular mistake. Spend the full hour on it. If you see that your aim is your worst quality as a player, spend your time playing aim duels. Isolating weakness and grinding to get them up to par to your other fundamental skills will exponentially improve your abilities as a player. And it is, without a shadow of a doubt, the best way to effectively spend your time when your goal is improvement. Having two hours to play per day allows for a more balanced practice routine. Now, if you have two hours and want to maximize improvement, you need to prioritize spending time on your flaws as a player. What often happens with people having two hours to play is that they spend the two hours playing the same thing every single day because they find that that given thing is the most fun. Let's, for example, say that that thing is playing build fight one ones Now, playing build fight one ones is a great way to spend your time if you like the fundamentals, like building and editing. However, the problem is that the players that do play build fights for two hours a day already have phenomenal builds and edits. So spending your time playing build fights is kind of like doing math that you're already super good at when there's a different part of mathematics that you're really bad at coming up on a test next week. A lot of you watching this video might also feel as though your skill level is pretty well balanced, meaning that you have no exceptionally good qualities as a player, but also no extremely bad qualities. In a way, being like this makes practicing a lot harder because you're unsure what to spend your time on. If this is you, this is exactly how I would have spent my two hours. I would start the day by playing 12 minutes of aim duels. Focus on having smooth and steady aim. Don't try to flick or do anything flashy. You want to build your aiming style around sustainable movements that you can replicate consistently. After finishing up the 12 minutes, I would hop into creative to practice scuffed edits. Practicing scuffed edits is one of the most underrated ways to improve as a player because as we all know, it's those scuffed edits that end up eliminating us. I would spend another 12 minutes just setting up the most awkward edits I could think of and practice them every day until it becomes natural. When I'm done with this warm-up, I would spend the next 48 minutes playing 2v2 to 4v4 sonors or 32 player sonors. By playing these sonies, you get to practice your awareness as well as builds, edits, aim, and movement. I would also, as previously mentioned, attempt to play with Twitch streamers that are better than me so that I actually learn something when I play. When I'm done with all of this, I would start playing ranked and play ranked for the remaining 48 minutes of the day. I would heavily focus on surviving off spawn, and then when I have good mats and good weapons, I would start W keying everyone all around the map. By W keying everyone, you make sure the practice is as effective as humanly possible. And if you do this every day, I can guarantee that improvement will come your way. 
Next up, we have three hours. If you're willing to put in three hours into the game every single day, chances are you're aiming to get some earnings and potentially also start climbing the PR leaderboards. With three hours a day, I would undeniably start playing some customs. But naturally, this is not how I would start my day. I would begin by doing a simple warm-up routine consisting of firstly doing around 15 minutes of aim training. You can decide if you want to play aim duels, 200 pump FFA or Kovacs. But I would go for Kovacs just because of how incredibly versatile and fast-paced the practice is. You get in a lot of aim practice repetitions when doing a simple callbacks routine. After finishing the aim warm-up, I would hop into Ken Bean's Speed Realistics map, and in my opinion, this is one of the best maps out there right now. Working on fundamentals such as peaks, playing aggressively, and playing defensively is super easy on this map. I would recommend playing for something when you're versing your friend, as that will make the practice even more effective. We usually play for forfeits, meaning if I win, I can tell my friend something embarrassing to do, like posting a cringe tweet or something totally different. Something serious enough to the point where you know your opponent will try. I would spend another 15 to 30 minutes playing this until I move on to Martos's 1v2 map. Martos recently made a phenomenal map where you get to practice your 1v2s. This map is really good for understanding how to play whilst getting pressured, and I would honestly spend another 20 to 30 minutes just grinding this out, practicing your clutching. The great thing about doing 1v2s is that you become super consistent, as messing up a singular edit or missing a shot can be the difference between winning a 2 versus 1 and losing, and your brain will take note of that, and you will automatically be super focused when you play this, again resulting in improvement. As soon as you're done with aim training, speed realistics, and 1v2 practice, you should start playing customs. Alternatively, you could sprinkle in a 30-minute session of ranked, depending on whether or not you feel as though you need more fighting practice. Now, if you're a low PR player, you need to play Noble Opens if you're from Europe, and Mono Scrims if you're from NA, simply because you won't meet the requirements to get into better practice discords. What's really important to have in mind when playing these customs is that you want to make it to endgame, but at the same time, you don't want to sit on a box and stare at the wall. Try and be active when you're playing. Look around for opportunities that you can go for and take some fights as well. Just playing for endgame and not going for a single fight will make your practice extremely ineffective. Because if this is the case, you'll be doing nothing for 20 minutes and practicing for 5 minutes in the endgame in the span of a 30 minute window, if you include the time it takes getting into a custom game. When you've gotten into the custom grind, you need to always push to play against the best players you can meet. So try to climb the ranks in the custom server you play in. On 3 hours a day, I wouldn't recommend setting off a lot of time to VOD review. Instead, I would try and watch some pro players when you're not on the PC, when you're chilling and eating, for example. Try and watch smart players like Acorn and Seti, and your game IQ will undeniably improve. In short, do some aim training into speed realistics, then hop into Martos' 1v2 map to get the needed fighting practice. Then, start grinding customs. If you do this, you'll see the tournament placements skyrocket in the coming months. 4 hours of playtime every day gives you a lot of time to become an actual good player. This is also where you can start heavily practicing unique skills. If you want to perform better, than everyone else, you need to have qualities not everyone have. And consistently playing 4 hours a day allows this to become reality. Firstly, let me make one thing crystal clear. Most players today already have good builds, edits, and aim. So becoming a top player, being insane mechanically, just isn't enough anymore. You know what most players don't have? Most players don't have incredible movement. Or awareness to the level where you never lose track of your opponents in fights and endgames. Or the ability to IGL at a structured and professional level. The reason most players don't have these qualities is because they only come with dedication, hard work and a hunger to become the best player you can possibly be. Unlike builds at its name, which all come very naturally to players who have invested a few hours into the game. The reason I'm telling you this is because when you have 4 hours a day to practice, you should start practicing these unique qualities not everyone have. This makes your practice effective and as a result you become a player with a rare skill set that can be beneficial in tournaments. I heavily recommend to those of you who have 4 or more hours to put into the game to ask yourself the question, what can I practice today that nobody else will spend time practicing? If I was playing 4 hours daily, I would study one makes a great IGL. Naturally, if I didn't have the fundamentals, I would make sure that those came up to par before starting the journey of becoming a good IGL. As there is no point in being a good IGL if you can't build an edit. But I guarantee 90% of you watching this video already have the needed builds and edits to start focusing on the more advanced aspects of competitive Fortnite. I would spend around one hour of my day just figuring out what makes IGLs like Acorn so good. I would compare our early, mid, and end games. Find differences and ask why he plays it differently to how I would have played it. The split I would try to do would have been 1 hour of water viewing, a similar warm up to the one mentioned for the players with 3 hours, then 2 hours of customs, and then the last hour grinding creative. On 5 hours of playtime every day, you will start becoming more consistent than 99% of other players. That is if you use your time wisely. A lot of people who play 5 hours a day use their time impressively and effectively. So let's talk about how you can get exponential improvement from a 5 hour investment every day. When playing these long hours, it is absolutely crucial to warm up. It shouldn't even be a question whether you should or not. And 
And let me explain why. Warming up limits your mistakes in game, meaning you'll practice at a higher level compared to how you would play if you don't warm up. Practicing when your aim and mechanics are on point gives you an actual understanding of what plays you can and cannot go for. On the other hand, if you don't warm up, you'll get a flawed understanding of what kind of plays work and not. Because you'll make mistakes you normally wouldn't make when you're just playing without having that simple warm-up routine. I'd recommend spending a good amount of time on getting properly warmed up when you are going to invest 5 hours a day into the game. Start by doing 20 minutes of aim training. Kovacs, aim labs, creative serial build realistics, 200 pump FFA, aim duels, whatever you feel gets you properly warmed up. After concluding the aim warm-up, hop in and do some speed realistics. Focus on having good movement. Don't just edit to edit, think about the edits you are making and attempt to never lose track of the opponent. Do this for a good 15 minutes. Then, for the last part of the warm-up, play the 1v2 map we talked about earlier for 25 minutes. All maps will be in the description of this video, so go down there if you don't have the map codes. That warm-up should get you to play at near peak form. However, if you feel another warm-up routine works better for you, obviously go for that one. I just feel like the previously mentioned warm-up is such a good one to cover all aspects of the game. Next up, you want to play one hour of solo ranked. I know solo ranked might not be super fun, but it's important to get some in-game fighting practice. Play solo ranked with the mentality that you're going to fight everyone you see. Make the practice effective. In addition to playing this one hour of solo ranked, write down the reason you get eliminated every time you die. For example, if you missed a shot, type aim. If you failed on edit, type edits. Do this until you have minimum 20 reasons as to why you got eliminated and use your focus on improving those weaknesses, either the next time you play solo ranked or even spend a little more time working on that in your warm-up routine. When you play as much as 5 hours today, you need to also play customs, especially if you want to make it in competitive. Try your absolute best to find a no zone rule custom server in your region to grind. Servers like Noble Div 3, 2, or even 24-7 in Europe, and Vital Scrims in NAC. Play these scrims to get your game sense up to par with your raw mechanical skill. Do this consistently for a couple of months, and you will look at the placements you're getting today as a bad day at the office. I would recommend playing a minimum 2 hours of these no zone rule customs. If you can play more, then go for that. However, if no server is hosting, spend the rest of your day playing against good players in either zone wars or realistics. Zone rule customs can also be a good idea, but only if you feel as though your end games aren't up to par with your other current abilities. When you have the opportunity to do 6 hour sessions every day, you might ask, what should I do differently compared to 5 and less hours? Well, starting off, you should set aside 45 minutes of Kovacs or Aim Labs every day. You need to be different and more disciplined than the other players putting in 6 hours. And one of the easiest ways to do so is by playing some aim training. Now, a lot of people say that aim training is pointless, but let me ask you this. What is one thing you can practice and not get better at? Think about it for a second. If you put 45 minutes into something every single day, please name one thing that you won't see improvement at after the effort is made. Is Kovacs and Aim Labs the only thing in the world you don't improve at when putting in time and effort? I don't think so. On the six hour schedule, you need to prioritize playing with good players. Naturally, if you play six hours a day only for fun, then I respect that and you of course don't have to do this. But if you're putting in 42 hours a week into the game, chances are very high that you want to succeed competitively. Do your best to get into a good friend group. Find others who also put in the same amount of time as you and have the same drive to succeed. The best ways to find people is on Twitter, but if you're relatively new to the grind, going into Discord looking for group channels can also work wonders. This much time invested, you need to be your own worst critic. If you make a mistake, you need to ask why and how that is happening. Playing six hours a day, you should very rarely get eliminated because of you making a big mistake. The times you get eliminated should almost exclusively be because the opponent is playing phenomenally well. If you can adapt this mentality, playing six hours will be more than enough to start placing extraordinarily well. The same rules apply for warming up on six hours a day as on five hours, so if you didn't catch what I said on five hours, use the video chapters to go back to that part of this episode. You want to undeniably prioritize good customs on six hours a day, but you should also get in at least 90 minutes of focused fighting pack against the good players as well. You can do this by playing creative or W King in solo ranked. If you can play against great players in creative, choose that. But if no one's online, start holding W in ranked. It can also be a good idea to have replays on to check how you get eliminated in ranked. A lot of the time we play subconsciously and we make mistakes we don't notice in the moment. However, if we go back and rewatch a fight that we lost, we might have made a major mistake we only notice through replays. This strategy of VOD reviewing fights has been used by many pros to develop top tier fighting abilities. So don't be scared to take a few minutes to go over your flaws in replays. If you're someone who plays 7 hours a day, you more than likely already have all the fundamentals needed to become a great competitive player. People who play 7 hours have the advantage of having more than enough time to make structured plans to succeed competitively. With 420 minutes of time every day, you should have a loot path, a farming path, a surge route and a strategy ready for the end games you get to. If you haven't thought of becoming a structured player whilst playing 7 plus hours or you're not sure 
sure how to do it, chances are it would be worth it for you to get a coach. A lot of you watching me are probably way better players than you might think. If you have the fundamental structure and understanding of how a competitive game plays out, it will become infinitely easier to also succeed in it. What I'm saying is you guys watching who grind as much as 7 hours a day probably don't lack or need to focus as much on mechanics or the other fundamentals players with less time to play have to focus on. With 7 hours, you should spend some of your time making the best drop map for your spot, you should spend some time making an off-spawn strategy. When you play over 40 hours a week, this game more or less becomes like chess, and you need to figure out how you can have the advantage in any situation you might find yourself in. Now, if I had 7 hours to play, this is how I would structure my day. One hour to begin the day would go to VOD reviewing and making strategies to win fights off-spawn, figuring out the best rotates for my spot and how to play the different moving circles. 45 minutes would go to Kovacs. The next 30, I would get properly warmed up before hopping into one hour of ranked where I play to the key everyone and go over every game I get eliminated. Then I would start playing no zone rule customs. I would play for three hours and then as soon as I was done with that, I would end the day by playing against my friend group in zone war 2v2s, realistics, or whatever, as long as I play against good players for the remaining 45 minutes. The final post of today's video is playing for eight hours a day. The beauty of eight hours is that you'll have time to isolate everything and work on each aspect of the game individually. For example, you'll have time to learn exactly how to play first moving. You'll have time to learn exactly how to play defensively, aggressively, and essentially how to do anything the pros do. The way you do this is you find something you want to work on, very specifically. For example, first moving. You find a game that someone like Seti, Acorn, or Taysen won, and you skip to first moving in that game. Pause the replay before the first moving zone pulls and think very hard about how you would have played that exact situation. Play it out in your head, and when you have it crystal clear what you would have done with the given mats and loot the professional player has, you press play on the replay and you see how they play it. If they play it super differently to how you would have played it, try and figure out why. There is so much improvement available in doing this. You can apply the exact same method to fighting. Let's say you've out of your Cooper. You see that he's about to fight two players. You pause the replay, think about how you would have fought with his loot and mats, and then play the replay and find the differences. Obviously, you can't do this for the full eight hours, but it's a great way to learn something new every day. And I would recommend spending some time doing this if you're not getting the tournament results you're hoping for. In order to be hyper effective on an eight hour day, this is what I would have done. I would begin by finding a weakness of mine. For example, aggressive fighting. Then I would spend one hour using the strategy I just talked about to learn what pros do differently and find out why they succeed and not me. Then to no surprise to anyone, I would hop on Kovacs for 45 minutes before doing a warm up, playing Swanors or Speed Realistics and Mortos' 1v2 map for 30 minutes. For the next two hours, I would fill on fight everyone in solo ranked before hopping into a three hour long customs session. Then I would also VOD review afterwards for the remaining 45 minutes of the day. At the end of the day, effectively improving in Fortnite it comes down to being honest with yourself, finding your weaknesses, and working on them regardless of how fun you consider that process. If you at the same time can surround yourself with better and better players as time progresses, you'll be a phenomenal player in no time. Guys, that will just about wrap up today's episode. I really, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate all the support the channel has gotten recently. It makes me extremely grateful and I feel very, very lucky to be able to do this for a job. So thank you so much. Other than that, guys, please go on to have a wonderful week. And I'll, of course, see you all very, very soon.